Questo piatto è il beef alla Wellington. I've never seen a beef Wellington made this way before. I feel like most people on the internet just makes it the way that Gordon Ramsay does it, like that. This beef Wellington is perfectly cooked and has really unique decorations on top. It looks so next level that it makes the Gordon Ramsay version looks like like I made it. So anyways, as you can tell, this video is fully in Italian, so I'd have to guess what he's saying, follow along, and show you how to recreate this at home. So I did some research and I found out that the Connet is well known for making rich Europeans happy. Their bar was named best bar in the world and has multiple Michelin star restaurants on site. This is their head chef, Marco Zampis, and he's pretending to read a book. So the first step is to trim your fillet to get the centerpiece, or you can call it Chateaubriand if you want to seem educated. I think he's trying to be nice to his line cook on camera here. When you go back, you can clearly see this guy nervously laughing while Marco has a joker smile. Maybe when they turn off the camera, Marco starts asking for the lamb sauce. Where's the lamb sauce? Right here. So the improvisation is going to start earlier than expected as my whole food doesn't have whole fillets, so I have to piece them together. Looking at this pieced up Chateaubriand, I realize we're off to a pretty low end start. But like many things involving meat, tying things up always brings extra excitement. This step is pretty intuitive as all meat dishes start with salt and peppering. Just make sure you do all sides. Lo andiamo a rotolare con della pellicola molto stretto. Poi ovviamente a casa, se non avete abbastanza tempo, un paio d'ore saranno sufficiente. And then we'll wrap the meat in plastic only done in this context. Even though I went to Whole Foods, but I still managed to get radioactive meat. And I don't know how long, so I was just leaving the fridge for three hours. Lo andiamo a rosolare molto velocemente in una padella con dell'olio d'oliva perché ovviamente non vogliamo danneggiare la cottura della carne. While the pan is heating, we'll unwrap the fillet and briefly dry it. When the oil is nice and hot, we'll start searing. Adesso vediamo Timothy che prende il filetto raffreddato e lo andrà a spalmare con della senape di Dijon. He said Dijon, so we're gonna slather this piece of meat with mustard, which is also the only seasoning used in this dish besides salt and pepper. Se avete grosse quantità, potete ovviamente utilizzare magari un frullatore. To make the mushroom duck so I'm gonna go with the chef's mix. Chef's blank is the perfect marketing strategy to trick people like me who can't make up their minds. Like chef's selection of sushi, chef's garden salad, or chef's recommendation of wine pairings. The name makes you think there's somebody in the back kitchen carefully selecting these options for you. But the truth is they're mostly just trimmings from the kitchen that the chef doesn't know what to do with and speaking of not knowing what to do Andiamo a riscaldare dell'olio del burro I'm gonna do medium high heat with a tablespoon of oil and two tablespoons of butter Ci mettiamo lo scalogno tritato e lo facciamo soffriggere molto lentamente Get ready for some professional chopping footage Ah <laughs> Durante la cottura eh, condiremo con del sale del pepe. Mushrooms in, season it and mix well. Tutta l'acqua di vegetazione evaporata, aggiungeremo del prezzemolo tritato. Mixing a handful of chopped parsley, transfer it into a small baking sheet and cool. Andrà a sbattere delle uova con una frusta, dopodiché aggiungeremo un po' di latte. So I looked ahead and find out he's making crepes here. Uh, I don't know how to make it, so I asked ChatGPT. You can follow its exact same recipe, but here's what I used. Just combine them all together and add a little bit of this green stuff he's doing here. I think it's chives or parsley. Brushing a little bit of butter. Well, it looks easy enough. We'll put a little thin layer of batter in the middle of the pan. Once it looks ready, we'll just toss and flip like that guy did in the video. Minor inconveniences won't stop me from making this great beef wellington. Don't worry, we'll remake the crepe. This time we'll make it smaller so it's easy to work with. Now it seems much more manageable.
William andrà a formare un rettangolo con delle fette di prosciutto. Look, he's chatting up his line cook again. I think the conversation went like this. Hey William, what did Mario say to Princess Peach when they were breaking up? What chef? He said, I'm sorry Peach, it's not you. It's me, Mario. That's funny chef. Disponiamo sopra un foglio di pellicola il nostro prosciutto crudo. Now we're gonna place a layer of prosciutto crudo. Cerchiamo di, di fare uno spessore di circa mezzo centimetro aiutandoci con una spatola. And then on top of that, the mushroom duck cell from earlier. Filetto di manzo con la senape. E rotoliamo il tutto ben stretto, uh, sempre appunto avvolgendo la pellicola. I really like this technique of pressing down instead of twisting the ends. It makes the whole thing less messy and also it looks good. As I'm rolling, I realize my prosciutto is not long enough to cover my whole fillet. So I have to go the vertical way. And then I realize even the vertical way is not long enough to cover the fillet. So I'm just gonna have to do some surgeries of opening things and patching them up. Tutti questi passaggi sembrano molto banali. Then we'll repeat the same technique with the crepes. I'm having a lot of trouble wrapping it because the size of the meat is too big. Here's a sentence I never thought I'd say. Egg washing the surface. Arrotoliamo il tutto. Abbastanza stretto, ma non troppo, altrimenti andiamo a rompere la sfoglia. Same technique again as before with the pastry sheet. e eh, nei lati andiamo a chiudere con una forchetta. We're almost there. We're gonna egg wash the whole surface, tuck in the corners, and then seal it up with my Ligma fork. E ci andiamo ad aggiungere qualche decorazione. Nel nostro caso ci metteremo delle trecce e delle foglioline fatte di pasta sfoglia. A caso ovviamente potete sbizzarrirvi con qualsiasi altra forma. I prepared some decorations just like the ones he had in the video. And before you start doubting me, here's the proof that I braided them myself. So after egg washing them, we're gonna decorate my Wellington like a gift box. So the first braided string is gonna be used to cover up that ugly seam that's been bothering me for the past hour. Followed by another one across to make people think it's Christmas. And then we'll let the leaves fall there, there, and there. Poi ci mettiamo anche delle foglie di timo, un po' di pepe e del fleur de sel. And then we'll use our tweezer to place thyme flowers all over the Wellington so that it looks like an adhesive fruit fly trap. Fior di sale. Per la cottura abbiamo bisogno di un buon forno. La cosa ideale sarebbe avere una... And finally we'll finish it with salt and pepper. Honestly, if you put them side to side, I cannot tell you the difference. I'm glad that my end result looks exactly like the original one. But we still gotta check with Instagram. What's poppin'? Brand new whip just hopped in. I got options. I can pass it. It's like Stockton. Andremo a mettere il nostro filetto alla Wellington direttamente sulla placca di metallo. Circa 25. Place the Wellington directly on top of a tray and then bake for about 25 minutes. Mine's a little smaller, so I'm gonna go with 18. Come vedete, ha un bel colore dorato. Per una cottura. Alright, time's up, and this Wellington is looking. Honestly, kind of on the light side. I'm gonna put it back in the oven for 5 more minutes. Later. Alright, after another 5 minutes. Didn't really make much of a difference. But honestly, I'm pretty proud of myself for this one. It's not exactly the same as the one in the video, but I think it still looks pretty good. Ora non ci resta che andare a tagliare il nostro Wellington. Vediamo che la cottura è al sangue. I know he cooked it to the perfect temperature, but if you ask me how it looks, I'd say... Let's check out some YouTube chefs Wellington and see how they look. And for me, if you want a really nice chain. But anyways, all kidding aside, let's cut my Wellington open and check it out. It's raw. Um, why does it look like that? 
What's up with the great band around the beef? As I put my beef wellington in the thumbnail position, I found a clip of Nick saying things I needed to hear. Now hear me out here. Sometimes on camera, things can look weird. And from what I can tell right now, this looks perfect. So my camera makes it look a little weird, but from what I can tell, it looks perfect. Il nostro lo finiremo semplicemente con un beef giù al madera perché la qualità della carne appunto è molto importante per me e non voglio coprire appunto con la dolcezza delle cranberries. A giorno d'oggi esistono molte varianti del beef alla Wellington. I ran out of patience a long time ago, so let's get to eating. We'll first cut a thick piece and set it aside, transfer it onto a plate, and then cover it with the beef jus we made off camera. Now we can dig in with a ligma fork and a big knife. I almost forgot to tell you that I untied those pieces earlier. Now I'm gonna pick up a piece and just appreciate it for a moment. What the... All right, it's time to taste. The butteriness from the pastry sheet and the umami from the mushroom duck cell is working together to emphasize the delicate flavors from the beef filet. But I think I should have left it in the oven a couple minutes longer because both the beef and the pastry sheet is a little bit underdone. But overall, the flavors are very vibrant. This makes me want to go to the Connet in London and try a real piece there. But for now, I'd have to settle for this. Alright, thank you.